Right. I think we're live. So I'll just wait while uh, while more people join before we get started. I hope you've all had a good break. Right. I do like this new. I do like this new uh, hands and things floating up screen. I haven't oh, been yeah, using Zoom, Zoom as much as others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just floats up, and they've even got the little wavy thing going, so it's great. It's, it's very reassuring that there's, there's people out there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Um, so, hi everyone, and welcome back to uh, to the government track at Map Camp 2022. So I've got two speakers joining me today. Um, uh, Liam, I'm not sure if you if you want to put your camera on just uh, quickly so everybody can see you and give a quick wave. Um, so this is a session on mapping across uh, government. So Liam, Liam Maxwell uh, is director of the government transformation at Amazon uh, Web Services and former CTO of the UK government's cabinet office. And Simon Clifford is a government transformation advisor and founder at Cliff42. He's also the former director of digital and data at the UK, uh, the UK's police ICT company. So welcome to MapCamp, uh, both of you. So it really is, it really is a pleasure to have uh, have you here. This should be a really good session, right? So I'm I'm really looking forward, Liam, to, to hearing uh, how maps can help uh, beat the Department of No. I imagine that many people in the audience members have been involved in in transformation efforts, um, both within technology and uh, and um, consuming technology. And uh, I I know I've been involved in these kind of efforts. And from my experience, the resistance to change is is really a common hurdle. And not to be underestimated. So, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and Simon, you'll be looking at uh, transformation from another angle, from the mental health and, and policing. And as knowledge workers, keeping our heads in the shape is critical to what we do. Right. So there's there's so many potential impacts when people suffer from mental health, health issues, from ranging from personal to friends and family to work, and in in the case of government, the whole societies. So we could run a whole day on this and and not do the topic justice. So the confluence of these two perspectives is, is going to be an interesting one to, to explore. So we'll have these these two 15-minute uh, sessions and uh, then break into a uh, into a panel chat. Um, feel free to ask uh, questions um, in in the, the Zoom chat, and uh, and we'll pick them up um, and, and bring those in. Um, if you'd like to go on to uh, on on screen, then uh, when it's Q and A, put your hand up and uh, and we'll try and get you included. Cool. So thanks both, Simon. Over to you. Thanks so much. Let me just uh, get my uh, deck up. Uh, really, uh, a real pleasure to be here uh, again. Uh, just checking that's, that that's live now. Um, uh, you know, I've spoken um, a, a couple of times. I'm always very self-critical of, of my presentation, given to the high quality of others, and certainly uh, in, in the shadow of uh, uh, Liam's uh, talk today, uh, I hope uh, people find it uh, interesting and engaging. So I'll be talking, as, as Steve sort of suggested there, uh, about mapping across government. From my perspective, um, I've worked in policing and uh, very much the narrative of a whole system approach, uh, which is certainly central to a, a number of large uh, uh, major national strategies. So I'll just crack on. There's lots to cover. Uh, I'm going to be a bit light. We've got a few maps in there, but I'll, you'll appreciate, given the time, I won't go into massive detail with it. Um, but fundamentally, there's two things. Uh, the, the graphic on the top left there, um, I, I used in my presentation last year, and it talks about the Organising for Digital uh, Delivery report that came out last year, which informed this spending review. Uh, and that certainly talked about the uh, the, the waste for, for KTLOs, as, as it was uh, deemed in that report, which is keeping the lights on. Uh, ultimately, police uh, government is spending, so this is beyond just policing, uh, government is spending circa £20 billion pounds a year on technology uh, and it estimates between 13 and £22 billion, uh, of waste uh, in that space uh, over five years following that report that came out last year. And actually, um, I haven't seen an updated version of that report, but given what's been happening, uh, we've certainly seen uh, government spending an awful lot of money. Uh, so actually, the, the case for this has increased, not decreased uh, in, in, the, in, in the intervening year. And really, what I'll be talking about is how you find you know, how you find simplicity within the incredible complexity uh, with, within government, uh, so that you can speak to uh, government stakeholders uh, about a clear, uh, clearly articulated vision and evidence that you can deliver that effectively within a meaningful timescale. 
because the most senior stakeholders have a lot of skin in the game in terms of reputational damage if they don't get things done. And that's right to because it is public money. And then how you navigate that path to success. And that's why I think uh, in terms of when we're talking about mapping for all the reasons Simon talks about this morning, um, ultimately it is about navigating your path, seeing the, the environment so that you can uh, actually plan that through. And central to that are stakeholders. Uh, now, I am going to be talking about mental health, um, but I'm going to start off with a little bit of a, a, a story about uh, cybercrime and some of the work that I've done, because that was informed uh, by uh, worldly mapping in terms of understanding the situational awareness. Uh, and actually, this is a, a story of success, which kind of evidences to me and hopefully to us to, to those uh, listening today uh, how we can actually progress this, uh, how we can progress meaningful change, the scale of the change around areas that, that really matter so stories uh, i'll be talking about the story of cyber alarm now um, cyber alarm very quickly is a project that was started in northamptonshire why northamptonshire of all places um well it's it's where i'm based i was director of digital transformation within northamptonshire police uh, back in 2016 17 um, and i was looking at the emergent threat of uh, a cyber crime obviously we'd had the launch of the national cyber security center you know, policing has had a large role with regards to action fraud uh, and its work in the city for large scale financial crime and fraud. So UK has never shied away from addressing this form of uh, uh, problem. Uh, and certainly you know, we've got fantastic uh, global scale capability within GCHG, which obviously uh, help um, spec out the uh, National Cyber Security Centre. But more at the local um, small end of our business, we've seen a massive increase in the amount of uh, crime that is um, done online. Uh, in, in, in fact, about 50% of crime, whilst people see crime on TV shows, you know, detectives and blue lights fly, flashing around, uh, a lot of the actual crime is happening online. About 50% of crime is now digitally enabled or, or online crime. Uh, and actually, again, back to why Northamptonshire, well, Northamptonshire, despite not being the most populous of areas in the East Midlands, uh, it was disproportionately affected. Uh, by cyber criminality, by virtue of the fact that it's uh, in the middle of the country, it's a bit of a logistics hub and, and the uh, land value is much lower than in uh, areas like London and the big cities. Consequently, there's a lot of um, institutional back office functions there. So actually where the servers were, where the crime was actually happening, was often happening in, in, in Northamptonshire. So I created something called the Northamptonshire Cyber Security Forum, which is basically a cluster so that, that, that policing could engage directly with those uh, security people both from smes and uh, large enterprises in northamptonshire uh, which by the way includes silverston uh, and the whole uh, ip mass that is uh, the silverstone cluster uh, about 10 organizations lead uh, fantastic ip development within that space and also what we do is we, we had to orientate ourselves around the problem statement and that was uh, your classic OODA loop stuff um, and and using maps and engaging with frontline users. And you know, skip to the good bit, where we come from is policing kind of catching up and wrapping its head around uh, how it responds to cyber criminality uh, and, and cyber investigations with a massive um, shortfall in, in skill capability and, and real competition from the private sector to those that are, are skilled uh, to an area where UK policing is, is generally leading the world. And, and quite simply, uh, you know, with engagement with the National Cyber <laughs> North Atmosphere Cyber Security Forum, um, we mapped out the, the areas of ineffectiveness within the national uh, posture and fundamentally the process by which uh, we would engage with uh, with a business when it, it is a victim of a, a cyber attack. Long story short, um, there was a very manual process. You'd go to an office, you'd physically collect digital evidence. Um, and most of the time it's uh, been perpetrated from a, a foreign state, which limits the pace at which you can actually do that investigation. And sometimes it's kind of, um, it just stops it there. You know, if it's coming from uh, Russia, Iran or, or North Korea, you're not going to get collaboration with their police. But even when it, it is, it's just Europe um, or the US, there's still massive um, barriers and challenges to that coordinated response. Um, so it was can be characterized both saying it would be very reactive. Um, it was highly manual, uh, literally investigators investigating this crime, which there were way too many incidents 
uh, coming through even at that stage um, to be able to attend everyone. There's some narrative in the, in the national press about attending every burglary. You try and attend every uh, cyber attack or, or even cyber theft, um, we'd be overwhelmed overnight. Um, so, so that manual process wasn't sustainable, and ultimately it was costly and inefficient by virtue of there's a whole bunch of incidents you simply can't follow up to, identifying who the, the, the threat is, let alone securing a prosecution. So the outcomes were uh, relatively poor. Uh, we were attending, we are giving people crime numbers for any level of insurance they got, we'd mark the crime, but equally we were getting a poor representation of the real amount of crime that there was. So what we did was we brought in uh, automation. I could I identify the areas in terms of collecting that reporting as one of the key areas and actually um, the, the key element of offering some value back um, to the businesses who participate with us. And that's actually about giving them protect advice and uh, and information that they those people, whilst oftentimes very senior or at the top of the stack when it comes to security within their business, the information that came from policing, giving them recommendations to invest in certain technologies to help protect themselves, or even if there wasn't a financial investment, just to turn things off, close certain ports that would make them more secure and less vulnerable to certain emergent threats. And long story short of mapping the situation, identifying the threat and being able to tell that story as succinctly as I have now, is we built a capability built, built on existing technology, creating the new requirement that was fairly moderate on top of existing technology, uh, which is now preventing crime. It's had uh, 10x growth since uh, full release. We started in Northamptonshire, we went to a regional pilot, we went to a national pro uh, pro um, pilot, uh, and now it's national rollout. Um, and we, there are thousands of uh, cyber alarms now deployed in the country and it's growing and it's a national rollout. And again, it's world leading. And actually now it is actually supporting prosecutions whereas prosecutions under the, the Misuse of Computers Act was very challenging previously, we're, we're now actually gathering the evidence to support those prosecutions and coordinate more effectively together, both locally from one force to another, victim in one force area, uh, uh, um, perpetrator another, and equally internationally. And actually for the first time, we've got law enforcement agencies identifying zero day threats. So it's now up there with private industry and, 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 and uh, expertise within the private sector in the very specialist cyber security sector of identifying zero day threats because of uh, the insights that we can drive from the data that's been captured. So that's my quick run through in terms of what successful rollout looks like. So applying the same principle to mental health and particularly um, as, it, as it goes to suicide. Now, suicide, forgive me, it is a, it is a bit early, but it is a dark subject. Um, this is a really major problem within the UK. Mental health uh, in the round is massive, but equally as uh, as it goes to the extreme case uh, where it results in suicide, where over 6,200 uh, people killed themselves last year. Uh, it's estimated that this has an impact to the economy of 1.67 million per death, or put another way, it's a 10, 10 billion pound cost uh, to the UK economy. Uh, and that's notwithstanding the huge personal uh, trauma uh, and impact it has to all those round people that do commit suicide. And beyond that, those that do commit suicide successfully, um, it's about five to one ratio to those that are unsuccessful. But often they have uh, life changing injuries, which again, has a compounding effect to the uh, impact to the economy and their families. Again, it's very similar. It's a bit of a different ebb here, but the commonality is true, but it's very reactive. It's highly manual. It's costly and inefficient by virtue of having lots of agencies in the private sector, third sector, and even government departments working um, towards different goals and then not working together. And what we often see is the impact of uh, the, the cost of uh, poor, uh, poor the, the cost of poor delivery is delayed uh, response to acute need often uh, allows for that need to uh, spiral and become much more costly and much uh, lesser of an outcome. So a couple of maps here, conscious of time. Um, really, this is talking about uh, how we, how how a patient coming in that needs mental health goes into the to the health service, and there's a whole bunch of providers that can provide help around that, private sector, third sector, etc., and then how that links into um, both local government and policing. And fundamentally, if you look at the red part here, it's really about that that patient record and how that links to funding and ultimately that goes all the way through to government so what i'm articulating here is what i'm 
I've taken that learning from cyber and applying it to mental health, how we can actually learn to do better uh, and deliver a response that's, that, that's, that's needed. Um, I'm, I'm currently involved with bringing stakeholders together from a bunch of government de departments, but also third sector and private sector uh, to identify areas where we can do data sharing that links to those uh, individual patient case files, um, but also in terms of the funding streams that are very much siloed and disparate. Um, ultimately, the steps I've, I've found are useful in terms of delivering um, transformation at scale is defi define the vision. Uh, mapping has helped me in both use cases to define that key piece that's going to have an impact. By doing that, you can communicate to the stakeholders, um, consider the ethics and the legality, obviously, uh, but the, the ethics of data sharing are part of that. And certainly under Liz Trust, she's actually committed to doing more around data sharing, despite a whole bunch of other challenges. Um, and then plan the technology using mapping because you're going to do it more cost effectively. And then actually, if you've gone through those other steps, getting the money is, is not so hard. But the value of, of, of how Cyrilon has been so successful is the quid pro quo. The policing gets something out of it and the public gets something out of that in terms of that, that protect device. So I'll wrap up there in terms of, from my perspective, mapping has been an invaluable tool in certainly my view of how we deliver transformation across government in terms of really giving clarity to that vision. Uh, it passes towards scale and it solves local and global problems. I'll stop there. Thank you so much, Simon. That's brilliant. Um, so we are, yeah, all conscious of time. So, um, so Liam, over to you. Oh, I'm hoping you're still I can work out how to uh, change, to share the screen if it can come across. Um, here we go. Great. Um, can you see that? Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Great. Good. Okay. I thought I'd try and make this as um, um, clear and simple. We're going to also just talk a little bit because Simon's really great examples of mapping across government. And I thought listening to that, it would be important just to help um, those of us who are trying to bring in reforms and modernizations in, in government, uh, just a bit of a, a retro on what we've seen work and what we've seen doesn't work. I work for AWS. I lead a team of government transformation leaders, all of whom delivered nation scale reform in the in the countries uh, that they've worked in as civil servants. So we and we also train around um, a thousand people a year um, across um, governments, operational leaders. So not the technologists, the operational leaders who who deliver the public services. And what we learn from the um, the colleagues that we meet and the people that we talk to within the um, within these organisations is sort of reflected in what I'm about to show you um, now as a way of how do we drive through reform um, effectively and and right at the heart of all of the training that we do and all of the training we deliver is mapping um, because for lots of people and I can't stress this more strongly enough especially the people that we work with. Um, Digital transformation, fantastic buzzword, everyone talks about it, but it's not about the tech. It's really not about the tech. It's about a different way of thinking and about a different way of operating and people's business model is changing. Now, if your business model is changing and people are throwing huge amounts of tech solutions and branding and, and all of these great ideas of the perfect and the thing that will really work, that will, will you know just go and buy a thing, it can become really, really challenging to identify what you need to, to latch onto to help your stuff work. And I'm going to say this several times during this. Speed of reform is really important. Being able to keep your speed going is more important. Okay. If you don't have momentum, your reformers won't work. So sometimes it's really important to go slower so that you can go faster later, that you need to plan and you need to view. And the thing that we have identified and so many of our uh, customers have come to us and talked to us about is the fact of taking that view and getting that situational awareness of what's in place. And that's where mapping really helps. So I've, I've used these slides loads of times. I, I always love them because there's great sort of anecdotes behind them. But if you look at, we did some mapping in uh, Department of uh, Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Uh, in the what I would probably describe these days politically as the era era of the disgrace of cheese, um, 
and um, we it's what we discovered when you're trying to identify things and how people can um, put together um, uh, uh, services. This is this is a map of the service to report the movement of a cow. Very simple, straightforward thing to you'd think to do. Huge amounts of administration, everything around the place. And being able to take people through this, not from the view of the tech or the, you know, buying a new system or putting a new thing together, but actually what is the business that you're working on and having that view where you are and where you can get to is tremendously, tremendously powerful. And obviously there are lots of caveats that come through here and we would point out, well, you know, you're not using... Um, cheap commodity items in the space you're not using cloud or when there's a, lots of these things are dark blue which was a wonderful way of describing manual stroke gray it which i i think is really a great euphemism for saying um printing out a pdf and filling it in and then scanning it back um you know <laughs> and 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 you know that that's just the really the sort of like the strange components of of government that the work like this um but actually being able to move to something simpler giving people the power to move to something simpler where the technology that you're using isn't the main thing you're talking about, it's what the functions are. And that's where we found mapping tremendously powerful. And this example is a great example of just saying, look, all of these things, let's simplify, let's just go away from the mass complexity at the top here of everybody trying to do everything and just sit down and work out what is the thing you want to do. Um, it came from the simplicity of, you know, when we worked on the uh, Rural Payments Agency um, a bit later than, than this, um, of just looking at, you know what were the rules of 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 running that and, and if you sat down it could be massively radically simplified if you just focus on what the business things you want to do are according to the needs of the user and then adapt the organization around that the what is the user need approach to this is really really powerful now the thing is that this was a really great way of showing that you could duplicate take away duplicate systems it meant that people could start moving on to uh, software as a service to help them deliver things great and 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 you could start to eliminate lots of that that kludge, the stuff that the really build up stuff that um that that, that we refer to as, as as gubbins, the gubbins of government. Um, but it also meant you could really identify where the where you could have the most impact. And so this this mapping approach with civil service was really powerful. But there is a step before this where you can get people into the tent. And what I wanted to talk about was the Department of No, because sometimes it's quite difficult to even get to this stage. With people so with the bear in mind that momentum is critical what i thought might be an idea was a way of showing how we also now help open up people's views to the way that technology and the changes can make a difference and this is a very very simplistic approach but this really seems to hit home with operational leaders so if you think about what government tech is government tech is essentially four things when you go and see a government cio these are the four things that they run there's an ERP, um, back office, runs payroll finances, etc. Um, lots of consolidation going on in that in the British government, but around the world, still um, lots and lots of places where that's been done in a checkered way. Um, best government to go and look at for that, by the way, is Portugal. Um, it's done really, really well in making making that making progress around common processes, etc. But you've got common infrastructure, digital public services, the services that you show the public, and mission tech, which is the services you show your workers and your colleagues so that you can build services. So on the digital public services, registering a car for a license, mission tech, the actual internal system within the justice system that enables the courts to run. Those are the sort of common combinations. Essentially, and you can see a formatting slight error there, but essentially the common infrastructure is the thing which really drives through the change. If you can have common infrastructure to base your technology on, it's much easier for you to focus on the things you need to focus on, which are the two things at the top here. And, and what we're really seeing now is the growth of more and more of that common infrastructure becoming available effectively for rent and the capabilities there coming for, for rent and, and available to people without them having to make huge investments in them. So that the, uh, the, the where we started um, previously, sorry, uh, just going through this, um, the, 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 the common infrastructure where you've just got say, storage, compute, databases, and those sort of common components and network all of those things are the core basis when we started doing our reforms on that stage. There's now a huge amount of changes that moves up the stack and you can get capabilities as a service. These are the, the AWS services for artificial intelligence, which you can use 
um, and machine learning, which you can use just as a pay-as-you-go basis. That every every company has, you know, every major cloud company has components of these. But the main thing I'm trying to say is that the capability to get those by yourself and be able to self-serve and use them is tremendously powerful doing this thing, which is increasing speed. And so being able to keep your speed going means that you're able to start to deliver the reforms that you want to get. And um, use what works, use what other people have done before. So one of the things we discovered was that there are about 130 open source projects across government, everything from the X-Road in Estonia through to Notify in UK through to um, some of the COVID approaches that were taken in Argentina um, that are open source and shareable across governments. So share them, leverage them, because why start to build something that someone else has already built and is used in an industrial sense across an, a large organization? It's much, much simpler to start to do those things and put those things together. So there are large numbers now of open source projects across government where governments can share and share the components that they use. And I, I often sort of shouted about the power of open source and people think you're just talking about moving away from you know, proprietary software. It's not that. It's the ability to move fast because other people have built those core components themselves that you can leverage. And we saw that particularly across the pandemic. One of the most enlightening um, conversations I, um, I, I saw happen was Prime Minister of Australia and the Prime Minister of, of Singapore having a conversation about how should we make a contact tracing service work. Being able to find leadership that enables that to work is really powerful. And it led to much, much greater collaboration and speed in a organ set of organizations that don't compete because the big thing with governments is they don't compete. There's no competition needed. You know, the Northern, the, you know, the Irish are not going to set up a driving license service in the UK. Um, they don't need to, but they do exactly the same thing. So how do you put those things together and help them run properly? And so going back to making things much simpler, this is a diagram we find people really like to buy into because um, it's just so simple at explaining how, once you've gone through mapping, what are the things you need to focus on? And if you've drawn a map and you've drawn a Wardley map, ruthlessly go and work out what you can leverage what you can find to move fast with and then focus on the things where you can make change and you can make your special components work and and, and your specialisms work and just being as blunt as this helps people understand where the where, where they can focus their their money their 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 energies and most importantly the one thing which i think a lot of people forget is probably the most important um the currency that we have amongst ourselves which is time so if time and, and speed is the thing you need this sort of approach helps people in governments move faster now you will find obstacles um i generally find i mean i've always found there were four we, we found there were four we find four in most governments these are the four we find in most of the governments we see around the world that you need to get people in to come and help you okay that's great you could solve the capability issues there's a way through that um Legacy, where people and the fallacy of sunk cost is something you need to address head on. Spending more money on something that is wrong is not a great idea. Even though it's there and it's much easier to spend the money on it, it's much better to take that step back and work out how you can park the legacy and move away. And, and the UK is probably the, a really good example of that. Um, procurement and being able to buy from the best people is very, very powerful as a way of helping people identify how to move forward. Um, and therefore being able to leverage smaller businesses and governments actually going out and saying, I want to work with the most innovative companies is really powerful as a way of making sure you can get the innovation and the speed behind what you need. And then we always found though this is a slightly unfair thing now that security was one of those things which held back and everybody thinks that when I say department of no, I really mean security. Um, and I've, I've got to tell you that one of the things that's been most enlightening as I've looked around the world, and I know this is a British centered thing and a British centered audience, but the National Cybersecurity Center in the UK is the most empowering organization in the world of government tech. Bar none, it is definitively not the department of no. There are security types that play the role in that space. But the people who know what they're doing and the people who know how to do it properly are, are fantastic at making that work. And they were the, the biggest enablers we have we we have seen, but they're also one of the reasons why the UK has done so well in this space. 
And then finally, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about speed where you really can make things move. So this is something I'm particularly proud of because it's a project I ran. Um, but moving an entire government into the cloud is a challenging thing to do. Um, but it's possible to get this moving. And over a period of 45 days, obviously with an extremely strong incentive to move, um, we helped the government of Ukraine move 68 workloads, 35 departments into the cloud to make them safe, to move their force security. Um, and the main bank in Ukraine also moved in 45 days. So when you hear people who are saying, you know, it's going to take a long time to do things, if you're prepared and if you're ready to move, you can do this very, very quickly. The important thing there is you need that, hopefully a more positive forcing function, but also a much more effective way of, of helping you deliver. But the, the really important component here is if you've planned and you've got your capabilities in place, if you go slower at the beginning to go faster, you'll find you'll have that momentum and the speed will help move along, uh, uh, will, will help you move as well. But focus on momentum as your way of ch making change happen. Focus on the people that can help you, the security folk, on some of them, the most effective people in helping making change happen. And then focus on uh, just keeping that momentum going, being transparent about what's there and making sure that you bring people with you. And my final line is that the way of helping bring people with them, with you, that we found more powerful than anything else has been mapping and helping people understand where they are on the map and how they can get to the future that they want to do. Thanks. That was brilliant. Thank you, Liam. All right. So yeah. So let, let's switch into discussion mode. Um. So so there uh, again to um, just to the audience. Um. If you'd like to get involved, then uh, you can just raise your hand up. Um. I'm going to start out with a, a a bunch of questions that um that that I've really wanted to ask. So the first one is is around um, transformation and other kind of sources uh, of of um of, of if you will guidance right so one of one of the things i struggled with uh, back in 2004 with my first transformation effort um was was trying to you know convince people and i, I came across a book um called uh, uh leading change by john cotter right it's become a classic and i'm wondering if um if there's anything from that uh, if there's any lessons from that that we could take into mapping uh, are you both have you both heard of that book before or is that uh no <laughs> i'm gonna say no Sorry, oh, okay. um, not as I'm much just running classic it down. as I thought. Yeah, so so there. Um, so uh, in in his work, um, he's uh, and this this has become like I say, it is a classic book. Um, so he's got to these different stages of um, uh, of you know trying to establish uh, change efforts and such. Uh, so like creating a shared sense of urgency um, and and need, um, developing um, uh, a, a guiding coalition, uh, developing a vision, a strategy, communicating, enabling employees, um, this kind of stuff, right? So um so yeah so so you know his his kind of building blocks uh, for for this. So if not, then um yeah. So if neither of you have heard of it, then uh, I'll move on. Uh, I'm I mean, I, I think I could pick up on the the the, the general thesis, and, and I think it, it reflects some of the the wide comments um, people have been asking in in the chat, and also Liam's key point that I can completely agree with is actually about the the pace of of, of rolling such stuff out. Part, you know, yeah. Partly, it's about creating that vision, and actually, the map. You know, if you're going to really Uber uh, senior levels, you know, yeah, speaking with the Ukraine government, uh, you know, as, as the bombs are falling. I doubt doubt the first conversation was a map. <laughs> uh, you probably just describe what you just went through there, the, the Liam, in terms of, you know, this is the mission tech, this is what you're going to do. We know um, Russia use, and forgive me, not putting words in your mouth. Um, we know you, you know, part of uh, Russia's warfare is is cyber and bringing down uh, government services. So that's kind of the, the need. Uh, and actually cutting through that and saying, well, this is how we do it. And then you lead into the, lead them into a map in terms of saying, this is how we can prove the success, that reuse piece, et cetera, et cetera. I think that is um, part of the key piece. What I would also add is I think it's top and bottom. Uh, as we've all recognized to understand, to, to get a really good map, and I love that, uh, you know, leverage and, and some focus, is the people that can give you the detail around those focus areas of the front line. So you need that big, you know, you need that top cover from somebody you know, significant to actually say, this is an area of activity that we're going to go down. But you need that frontline uh, understanding and knowledge to capture the details so you can actually 
uh, apply apply change that is meaningful and can be applied quickly. Yeah, I, I think also, and, and I'll, I'll say it again, it's, it's, it's the weird, I mean, I, I started, I mean, I don't know if anyone followed, I mean, I started in government 20, 2010 to 2011 and turned up thinking I could do everything quickly. Soon discovered, you know, <laughs> you've got to actually do quite a lot of preparation, but also the, it's the understanding of where you are and where you sit and, and how you can help, which is hugely, hugely powerful in helping you leverage your energy to help you get going. Um, and, and one of the things we have a leadership principle on Amazon called frugality and everyone thinks it's about money and flying economy class everywhere and it's not it's the only currency we have is time and so if you can think how you can spend your time more effectively to help solve your customers problems um, it's it's wonderfully f focusing as a thing to help you do that but the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you understand the the pitch on which you're playing and and that's why the map is is just so important. That's why we find the people who go faster and and do better, actually take that preparation to to understand what's going to you know if you, if if I do X then what's going to happen? What are the unintended consequences um, that happen in the state? We talked a bit earlier about the financial markets and you know there was something with the pension funds which I think probably you know is consequence five after several different things happened and. You know, people obviously did, didn't game that out, didn't think, didn't see that coming. And I think that's really important that you can use a map and game out and, and, and try these things out before you go and use them live. Yeah, there, there are a number of people in, in the audience who are commenting on, uh, on you know, when to use a when to use the map, right? So because if you just throw people in at the deep end, then it can often put them off. Right? So do you have any, um, you know, any rules of thumb for, for when's the right time? I think, uh, I mean, one of the things I thought there, which, which I try to do is just to say, I mean, you've got to take people with you. And part of taking people with you is that they can get to the bottom of what you're, you know, they can understand. And those simpler approaches that I pointed to, you know, that I, you know, with the common infrastructure, et cetera, that's the way of starting. I found that really helpful in starting the conversation so that people can then get the, it's not about just, you know, I want to buy you know, some sort of weird database version 4.8 rather than 4.5, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's actually about the business. And that's that's the way of starting the, the conversation and, 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 and getting things going. So I know they do look really, really simplified. I remember when I first used them over, you know, this side in, in, in the business world, I thought, oh, God, I'm going to get, you know, crunched because these are all just really, you know, <laughs> deeply, deeply simplified versions of it. But people we found people like that approach to get to get their heads around the idea because ultimately the best form of education is that people are actually building this the, building their answers themselves we can give people the tools but give people the, the ability to build their answers themselves is really important yeah so so then well, rather think, than uh, shoving a big map in front of them that's already complete is getting them involved in the act of creating it right which yes yeah it, then absolutely becomes theirs, and, right? and and literally you know it's one of the big problems we had in covid was was just not being able to you know i don't want to sound like you know this was all our life at gds but you know having a whiteboard and a bunch of post-its and helping people talk that through is tremendously powerful um at helping people grasp the idea of how something can work and um, it was really interesting during the pandemic that we couldn't do that. And there was a whole part of explanation that we just couldn't do. I mean, I found it really, really difficult to do. Um, and, and, and I think we, 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 you know, being vocally self-critical, I don't think it did a very good job of it during that period. I think one thing I'd add to that is um, the, the, your, 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 your point well made in terms of the one, the most precious resource is time. And actually um, trying to get the most out the least amount of effort is is really advantageous, um, and but but you need to ad identify where the sort of surgical effort goes, and and one of the things that I found very powerful in terms of my, my narratives is, is and that's why I was showing basically um, local authority police and NHS uh, yeah. the element that was in common. So actually, then then actually you're the catalyst to bring those people together, saying look, this is the shared problem, and you're trying to solve it through the partial view which actually gives you the right narrative to bring them together so that you can actually say this is the path through that solves all your problem and then you've got shared skin in the game and again that that's that's helpful yeah i i think one of the things that we we also i mean i don't know some of you were in, involved in this but there was somebody not me somebody no no one on my team 
uh, when I was in government, put a mapping in front of Mark Sedwell, the permanent secretary in the Home Office, as he then was, who then ran this famous workshop where he got, I think it was the passport, the immigration and the uh, visa services to map themselves. And then he put it all on acetate and they put them all on an overhead projector and just went, well, what have we got that's common? And it was just this amazing way of getting people to realize that there was a commonality across the piece that everyone yeah. then bought into. And it wasn't it wasn't the top down saying you must do this. It was a really good way of getting the, everybody within the organization to buy into the idea of commonality and how to how to leverage. And of course, nobody goes to work in, you know, particularly in the public service. Nobody goes to work to make things more complicated and, 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 and take more time. And so it was a really good way of, of, of opening that up. Um, two people and it was uh it was one of those moments when you just saw the light go on in a whole bunch of relatively senior people in the home office as people who were not as relatively senior were driving the agenda it was really powerful yeah, i'd love to find out yes. who did that with mark i mean the i went to, i went to the meeting where we saw it but i'd love to find out who that was who gave that to mark that's great i just want to I'd bring like, uh, mental health bring back, back into the, the uh, uh sorry Someone's put in the in the chat. I saw this. There's a load of chat going on about sovereign clouds, which I was sort of you know happy to have a chat about that on a different panel. But there's yeah. um there's someone's just gone, let's bring back acetates. And in a way, it's sort of like, yeah, it's you can't do everything electrically. Having tangible things is yeah, not a bad thing. So you interact with it differently. I wanted to bring yeah. mental health back into uh into the fray here. So um, so so they're thinking about mental health and transformation. Um I'm just wondering if there's like if either of you have tried um, looking at mental health issues and and trying to figure out how they factor into uh, resistance to change, is that something that you've? Uh, well, well, yeah. I mean, the the the, the, me the mental health piece. Um, I, I highlight the, the the cost in lives and cost of the economy, but equally, it's a mechanism to discuss that common uh, challenge that exists across uh, across society, both in the public and also within government. And actually, there's a duty of care for every government department and private sector to to look after its its people. And this is a this is a growing problem. But actually, the the, the solution to it is a common solution to too, so many other things. It's actually connecting up the data so that we can be more effective at doing that. So we're not so reactive. We can be more predictive and more coordinated in terms of that response. So we'll get more from less. We will leverage the existing resources uh, importantly. But clearly, you know, the, the the impact of mental health has a deleterious effect on anybody that's that's, that's trying to work. At, you know, so so yeah, no, the, it's uh, we're all overworked, overstressed, and and, and uh, with what's going on in the world today. It's uh, <laughs> I was giving a presentation about this last week. It's it's pretty dark out. Yeah, now wondering if if anybody's ever tried mapping the uh, the DSM, right? Because you're you're talking about um, you know uh, data and and basically notifying uh, notifying noticing the uh, you know mental health issues in the first place, right? So and, and the DSM is something that uh, psychologists uh, use to to um you know to, to basically clinically diagnose people for for mental uh, uh, health disorders and such. So wondering if anybody's ever tried uh, mapping that. Forgive me, just one, one point. One of the things about pace that that, 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 that links to, to to the wider piece. Part of the challenge we've got with senior government at the moment is, is ministers aren't sticking around long enough um, for lots of other reasons. But ultimately, what we have had is an actual increased quality of ministers that get tech, technology and data sharing is important. So that's a bit of a dilution from this piece. But actually, some of the data sharing principles that are being applied, it's how they deliver that, and that's why there is an urgency in terms of getting this done. Uh, quickly, yeah. You know, people like Nadine Sahawi, who who co-founded YouGov, yeah, you know, and 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 the work he did around uh, around vaccines, that was heavily data rich. So that hasn't existed in 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 cabinet uh, in the same maturity that 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 it has increasingly over the last sort of year or so. Yeah, you have found that people who really understand and really, if you've got a minister in charge who really understands and gets it, that's why it works. And probably the best example of that was the. Uh, uh, the government of Manaman Singh in India, who recruited Nandan Nilekani to be a cabinet minister to make sure that the identity program ran properly and achieved buy-in. And I still think, I mean, Nandan's one of my heroes in, uh, in, in, in government tech because he, he took on the most impossible you know, challenge and succeeded. 
uh, and then came back during the vaccine period. And I remember having a chat with him as he was planning out Cowin, which is the uh, Indian approach to vaccines. He went, yeah, the thing you don't understand, him is, is the scale. And I, and I said, well, what's the scale? And he went, I've got to do 25 million vaccinations a day. <laughs> and you're just like, how do you do this? And again, yeah. part of that is 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 just understanding the understanding the chessboard, understanding the lay of the land, uh, which was one of the things that I mean, he's he's not a war game mapper, but you can see the way that his mind works is is in that similar way of taking a strategic view, um, and 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 that's really that, you know those those that approach. You know, I I do find it, and it was something I'm I'm I wasn't very. I wasn't very good at actually it was the big thing I had to unlearn when I came over to to work where I work now is that to properly go a little bit slower to make sure you're getting it right so you can go faster later is is just really powerful yeah one of the things I would add to that point Liam as well is um I was thinking strategically before I hit mapping one of the things that mapping really taught me is the inertia points and actually to it to predict that inertia from one parallel to another and actually how you kind of prep your objection handling that actually is really useful um which even strategically thinking without fully appreciating that you, you, you get obstacles otherwise you're blindsided by obstacles and you can actually overcome them and predict them which is part of you know yeah. part of the cause right and that now. was sort of that's why we condensed yeah. that into you know the jokey square of despair um because actually the, those were the four that you know if you could identify the four things that are going to stop you you've got a fighting chance that you might get the things you want to do done. Yeah, I've often thought about taking sentiment analysis of, of uh, you know, people's uh, view of change and then pulling that into inertia as well on a map. So, yeah, I, think, I mean, yeah, one of the things one of my team has been doing for the last year is actually going through publicly published council minutes to identify in the language the sentiment towards transformation. So that we can try and identify which councils are the ones that are really focusing on the future, whose whose executive leadership are really focusing on transformation, um, yeah. and that's you know we just thought be interesting. It's really interesting to see which ones pop out. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we are we are pressed for time. Um, oh, there's one right, question so in there which I just like to touch on if that's all right, got, and I'm getting chased out here. Time for one so. more fevers. I think so. Yeah, let's let this will be the last one. Go for it. Paul Johnson's putting in this. How do you bring enough people with you? Um, be open and be genuine about what you want to do. That's what I'd say. There's, there's sincerity is, is it really helps in this situation because you know you've got to be vocally self-critical. You've got to earn trust. You've got to show that people that it's you know there's a really high likelihood the thing you're doing isn't going to work, but let's do it. Let's have a go. And I and I know that sounds it's not the sort of thing that 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 goes into government press, but that's the way I found of making change happen. Just be just be open with people about what what's going to work and what doesn't. I completely agree. Um, and also find your champions and join them up. Um, you could create a chorus of of of, of acceptance and support. Great, brilliant. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. It's a great session. Um, so if there's uh, more questions, then um, you can you can find both Simon and Liam uh, over in the, the, the government uh, tracks uh, chat in VFairs. So have a look there. Thanks all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye for now. Take care, guys.